Hi, I'm Brendan Barry, and this is the caravan camera. I was really into art at school. I loved art. I spent all my time in the dark room, in the in the art room. Uh, so I left school and went to college to to, um, to a foundation, uh, which is where I kind of realised that actually I wasn't very good at art at all. Um, but luckily, I discovered photography around that sort of time as well. A bunch of years later, I ended up doing a master's at University of Plymouth, which then kind of got me into teaching. And it's through teaching, I suppose, that I've started to become a bit more interested in how photography and education and the kind of constructing of how cameras can all kind of be kind of mixed together, I suppose, in some way, which is kind of some way led to what the caravan is. Making the camera uh, in the caravan was, was relatively quick, actually. I'd, I'd ironed out a lot of the creases with the previous cameras that I'd built. So I had a kind of understanding of what lens I could use, the distance, the focal length distance, um, and all these kind of things. And um, at the, the kind of from buying the caravan to having it up and running um, was about two or three weeks, I think. Yeah, the, well, the first time I used it, um, was uh, down at this um, pop-up art space and theatre space that um, happened in the summer down here next to on the quay. It's a place called the Boat Shed, and I basically put the caravan outside there for just over a week, um, and just kind of took photos of people that kind of came by. Anyone that was intrigued, I invite them into the camera, um, show them how it worked as a camera obscura. It's that response when they first see the image projected onto the, the projector screen inside, see the outside world projected in, upside down, and especially on a sunny day when it's really bright and vibrant. Um, and that, that, if you could bottle that excitement, that, exp you know, that kind of um, reaction from people, um, that's the thing that's sort of, yeah, most magical. And then, of course, when the picture become, comes alive in the tray, um, and I think even for people that have never experienced it before, never been in a camera obscura, never worked in the dark room, obviously it's, 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 you know, it's a wonderful experience. But even for people who maybe, you know, studied photography at school or used to work in the dark room when they were younger, obviously there's a sort of nostalgia value to it. Um, but even, you know, people that do it every day, I mean, I've seen a thousand prints be developed in the tray and I've seen, you know, hundreds of, of camera obscuras and, and built many myself and, and you just can't get bored of it. It's still, you know, a really magical thing every time. There's sort of two kind of routes, I suppose, at the moment. I'd like to kind of do some personal projects with it. I'd like to make some bigger prints, use roll paper, but also the other side, which is probably the slightly more rewarding side, actually, is, is it's kind of um, showing it to various different audiences. So taking it to schools, to hospitals, community groups, special needs classes, um, and being able to just, yeah, excite and engage people in, in the process. I became interested in when I started building cameras about how actually you could open up the whole process, how you could not just show the finished result, but show the, the camera that you use to take the picture and not just the camera, but how you made the camera uh, and the actual kind of building of it. And then actually kind of that got me thinking more about how you could involve people in the whole process and not just sort of show them every step of the way, but actually get them becoming part of every step of the way and, and therefore creating a kind of practice that was a little bit more of a participatory thing, had a sort of performance element to it, um, and therefore kind of, yeah, opens up the whole experience to not just me kind of producing something and asking people to kind of receive it, but actually, as I said, getting them, inviting them into the whole experience, and therefore they get to take a little bit of ownership and, um, and become part of the process, which then, um, yeah, is, is, is actually as, if not more rewarding than, you know, producing the work itself. I did this project um, where, the portrait project, where I photographed um, I think about 300 people or so came through and made 100 prints and then I brought it into college and, um, and yeah, brought all my students and various groups into it. Each year we often turn the classroom into a camera obscura, um, we'll kind of, you know, make pinhole cameras, um, we'll introduce them to the SLR camera and we take the lens off and we open and close the the, um, the aperture on it so you, they can see it you know, getting bigger and smaller and then we play around with the shutter speed um, and watch the mirror open and close. But then when I took them into to the caravan you can, you can actually see all of those things happening bigger and, and, and see the effect, the visual effect of what those things actually do. So what is actually quite difficult to, 
to, to kind of grasp theoretically that relationship between aperture and shutter speed. They can literally see it working and happening and the results of it visually, which, which does just, uh, yeah, has such an, an impact on, on cementing that, that, that information. At the moment, I'm shooting 16 by 20 inch um, paper negatives. Um, for a number of reasons, uh, it's, it's a lot more affordable. Uh, and I have the sort of, you know, trays that, you know, that you can easily develop it in. Um, but the camera, you know, I mean, the, the camera, the, the caravan itself is about two meters wide and my height, you know, about six foot five high. Um, so, and the image circle of some of the lenses I use covers the whole of that. So you could make a paper negative um, um, that size, you know, two meters by, you know, six foot or so. So I would like to build a bigger one. I'm thinking I've been looking um, once again on eBay for old um, horse box trucks, um, which have living quarters in them as well. Um, I'd like to be able to make something that was wheelchair accessible, warehouse camera maybe. But yeah, I think something, something is maybe a, I don't know, I just thought maybe a shipping container camera, maybe a ferry camera and take it onto the seas. Um, I don't know, the possibilities are endless.